everyone. <clears throat> All right. Just waiting for my screen to pop up. And there it is. Happy Monday. Today is especially Monday-ish for me because it was my first day back to work from vacation. And here I am stamping with you fine crafty friends tonight. Super excited to be home and back to a normal routine. Although I have to tell you, my house doesn't look like it's back to normal. It's kind of a tornado zone right now. And I haven't had time to get through all my laundry and all my cleaning, but you know what? Stamping comes first. Stamping always comes before housework. And so that's what I'm here doing. Stamping with you crafty friends tonight. I see a few of you saying hello, yay. Good, you're watching. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Julie and Rhonda and Susan and Kay. Thanks for watching tonight. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks, Jody. It feels so funny to have my hair down. Um, it's now long enough where I can kind of wash it and wear it because I have some natural wave and oh my gosh, it's kind of easier, longer, believe it or not. Although it is a little snarly, which bothers me, but it is what it is. So yeah, um, we got some beach waves going on. Vicki says, glad I got to enjoy some Florida sunshine. You know what? I really did. I took my goal of soaking up some vitamin D very seriously, and yet I was able to prevent sunburn. I mean, I got sunburned, but not like sunburned. Oh my goodness. There were some people walking around down there. They looked like lobsters. I felt so bad for them. Oh, it was so horrible. Hi, Julie. Welcome. I thought, I don't know how they're going to be able to put on any long pants or long sleeves after they get home from vacation because they were red. And um, I'm really glad that I was safe and used my sunscreen effectively. So I maybe have some sun-kissed skin, but not sunburned skin. And I'm super excited about that. So I'm back to reality here in Wisconsin and happy to be live with you from my stamping studio here in New Holstein. Isn't it fabulous? It's great to be back. And I came back just in time for the retirement list. It came out when I was on vacation. Um, and so did the new catalog for us demonstrators. And so if you want to get a sneak peek at that, you can definitely join my team as a discount shopper. And you get to order stuff from that new catalog before other customers do, which is one of my favorite things about being a discount shopper, because I'm kind of impatient about new stuff. So I got to browse that. I downloaded it and got to browse it on my plane on the plane. And it was super fun. I had a lot of fun. Oh, thanks, Cindy. Sandy and Cindy both are glad to have me back. I'm glad to be back tonight. We are, well, I'm showing you what I like to call simple to stepped up. You probably see some of these in the big catalog. And for those of you who are internet watchers, I'm sure you've seen simple to stepped up. This is something I've not done before. So I thought it'd be fun to challenge myself and in, uh, get into a creative groove when I got back. And we're going to be featuring some of my favorites from the big catalog. So I'm taking a little break from the spring catalog and dusting off some favorites from my upper shelf. I actually put my stamps that come from the different catalogs on a different shelf. So my top one is annual and the one below it is spring and I've already cleaned out my retiring stuff and oh my gosh, just took a minute to get organized. So that's what we have on the docket for you tonight. So for those of you who are new, my name is Rose Grunold. I'm an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up. Thanks so much for watching. If you're catching my replay on YouTube, I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just take a minute and hit that subscribe button. I have tons and tons of video tutorials on my channel. So you're going to want to have them in one handy place. And um, I like organization. I'm all about it. So that just makes it simple. If you are watching me live on my Facebook, 
remember, I have a prize drawing every week. And I give away prizes for those who comment and interact with me because I don't want to talk to myself while I'm stamping. I want to talk with all of you. And it's so much fun. We have a lot of fun. It's entertaining. And the more chatting we do, the more fun we have, right? Um, the other thing is that I give away prizes for sharing. I'm super, super passionate about sharing um, creativity with others. And when you share my page or my video on your page on Facebook, you help my support my small business. And so if you would be so willing to support my small business, I would so appreciate that. Just hit that share button. Now, Facebook has some... Um, security issues that I can't see who shares unless you tell me you share. So if you want in on the share prize, when you hit share, make sure you comment shared. Otherwise, I can't see that you did it. And I don't want you to miss out. I am giving away some prizes tonight, which I think we should do next for commenting. So I've been gone for a week. You might remember these pretty cards from my last actual Make It Monday Live. This is upside down. <laughs> um, and then we made this one with the postage stamp. Hi, Bernetta. I'm doing wonderful. How are you? Long time no see. And then my favorite, this butterfly card with the hugs and kisses tag. This is one of my favorite cards I have ever made. I love how this turned out. Okay. And then for my Make It Monday not live, I featured the same layout, but a totally different embossing folder, a different color, um, a different um, setup for that twine, but the same basic layout. Super versatile. So I've got four cards here that I am giving away for my commenting prize. And the winner of that is Julie Schulke. So Julie, I don't have your address and I want to get these in the mail to you. So if you would not mind sending me your address, you can email me at countrycardsbyrose at gmail.com or you can shoot me a private message and I will get these in the mail to you this week. Next, we have a prize for sharing. So what was super exciting is right before I left for vacation, I had my premier blog hop with the Stampers Dozen group. And I made some fun fold happy birthday cards. Check these out. Aren't these awesome? Um, I'm giving away these two cards for sharing and a package of these resin heart embellishments from the catalog. That is going to be my prize for sharing. So you get this full pack of embellishments. Um, and the winner of that is Denise Mendez. Denise, I also need your address. So if you could shoot me an email or a private message, I will get those out in the mail to you. My email address is countrycardsbyrose at gmail.com. Okay, love that peach butterfly card. And you know what? So did I. It was beautiful. I absolutely love those. Now you should know that I've had a little bit of a hectic day getting back to work. I came back to like over almost 200 emails that I had to go through and I was cleaning them up throughout the week. So it's been kind of a long day and um, I may not have everything quite as prepared as I usually do, but we're gonna get to stamping anyway. So tonight I am going to be using some of this pretty peony garden designer series paper. This is retiring and it's beautiful. So after it retires, you cannot get it again. So you're going to want to make sure you order that from the retirement list. I am also going to use a little bit of the champagne foil sheets for our stepped up card. This is also retiring along with our silver, silver foil sheets. And I, I pulled them both out because I don't know that you can see super well from the distance that I have this at, but I wanted you to see the color difference. One is kind of softer with a little pink hue and we're that's the champagne one. And we're gonna be using that to me. So hopefully I have everything cut and ready to go that I need. Um, we're going to start with some simple stamping. 
just stamps, ink, and paper, nothing else. No ribbon, no embellishment, nothing. So this simple card is wonderful for the a couple different types of stampers. Beginner stamper who is working on building their supply and new to stamping, but also veteran stampers who like a pretty card that you can duplicate really, really simply. Now I've got a piece of Whisper White Thick here and um, it is cut at a half a sheet, so five and a half by eight and a half. And I'm gonna score this at four and a quarter. Whenever I use Whisper White Thick cardstock, or sorry, basic white cardstock as my card base, I really like to score it because um, it's thicker. So when you go to fold it, it doesn't always have a nice, I want a nice crisp, um, crease and I just find with the thick it's easier if I score it. So I'm going to get my stamp and pierce mat here. Um, a lot of people have been asking me what do you have covering? It's just a piece of typing paper like normal computer paper and I tape the ends but I like having um, some paper over here because that ink takes a little bit to dry on this foam mat and you don't want it to get onto your card. So, hi Sarah, hi Robin. Oh good, Julie sent me a message, super excited about that. Um, glad that you did that so that I can get your prize out to you. All right, let's do some stamping. So I'm gonna use, we've got a couple flowers and I'm using the painted Poppy's Cling Stamp Set. Now you could do a couple different things with this. I almost made a card that only used this flower down here in the bottom right with a little sentiment to the left of it and just left it like that and it would have been beautiful. But I'm gonna do a little more stamping than that tonight with you guys. So we're gonna use this bigger round flower Thanks for sharing, Bernetta. I so appreciate that. And then we're gonna use this flower that's like a little bit closed. So you see how this one's like open and this one looks like it's coming from an angle. And then we're gonna use this kind of watercolor looking splotch here. Oh, Susan loves this stamp set. You know, I haven't used it in a while. And when I was looking to get inspired um, for a card to make tonight, I thought, I haven't touched my stamps from my um, annual catalog in a while. I think it's time to dust those off. So um, that's what I did. And it felt like I had new product again. So that was kind of fun. All right, we're also gonna use this little leaf right here and this little tiny paint splotch here. So for those of you who absolutely love stamping, and this I'm just going to mount on this little block, um, like you want to do more stamping than die cutting, which I totally understand. <laughs> um, this is a great, great card for that. Okay, let me get out my memento ink here. So if you wanted to color these flowers in with our alcohol blends, Memento ink would be a wonderful ink to use. If you wanted to watercolor these, you probably would want to use our stays on ink. But I'm doing all stamping, so I'm just going to use this Memento. And we are stamping that closed angled flower and then our big open and I'm going to alternate back and go back here to my oh, where do I want to put this I think I'm going to go here like that. and then our big one on the bottom just like so and then I'm gonna come in with my leaf and I'm gonna fill in in between the flowers. So we are really just 
stamping in the open space and filling in. These are homemade, so we don't need perfection. We just need a pretty card. And I'm going to come down here for that last flower. All right. Close this up for now. Now I am going to grab my petal pink. This is right here, yeah. And now I'm going to use this watercolor splotch. And I'm going to lighten the tone of this. This tone is already a little bit lighter than if I stamped like a solid image just because of how the stamp is. But I'm going to stamp off so that we have a lighter image yet. Okay. And all I'm doing is going over these flowers with this watercolor splotch. And I like to kind of turn my stamp a little bit different every time I do it so it doesn't look too uniform. All right, next we need our mint macaron. And I've got these little paint, paint splatters and I'm gonna stamp off on those two and then stamp those over the top of our flowers. So the stamp off technique is a simple one that changes the tone of your ink. Um, it's really that simple. It just makes your tone of your ink different. So you can totally fill in, if I wanted to, I could add a little bit more color here. A little bit darker, just kind of sporadically throughout here. And it would add some interest and texture. So what do we think so far? This is a pretty simple card, but simple doesn't mean it's not pretty. Now, I'm actually making some Mother's Day cards for some mother friends of mine. And I was looking for a great sentiment to use with painted poppies. And I turned to my Queen Anne's Lace. Now, I've got a set that's retiring. I think it's called Word Wishes that has a Happy Mother's Day. But I want it to be a bit more unique than Happy Mother's Day. And I found this sentiment celebrating all the wonderful things about you. And I thought, you know, that is such a perfect sentiment for Mother's Day because that's what we're doing on Mother's Day. We are celebrating all the wonderful things about our moms and our friends who are moms. So <clears throat> I wanted to do something that did not say Happy Mother's Day. And what's cool about this is when you use a unique sentiment like this, um, you know, sometimes it can be hard for our friends who want to be moms and never have gotten to be moms or who are fur baby moms. Um, a sentiment like this makes it so easy to make a card for those friends of ours. And, and I don't want to leave those people out. So I know that Stampin' Up! had a wonderful, wonderful focus um, donation for um, women with fertility issues, struggles. Um, this year I saw on their Instagram and I just thought it was such a worthy cause. And so I wanted to make sure that my sentiment was um, neutral enough that it could be used for any mothers or those who long to be mothers. So there is the front of our card. Now I'm just going to take my petal pink and we never want to leave the inside of our card bare because we don't want to stop the party coming outside. So I'm just going to come in here with my two flowers and stamp a little inside and now it's totally clean. I can write a really, really sweet message to my friend who is a mom.
my friend who wants to be a mom or my mom. And um, we're done. This is just stamp, ink, and paper. And we don't need a whole bunch of layers for everything to be pretty, so that's okay. It comes together quickly. What's really nice about these stamp sets with flowers is this could come together quickly and you could just swap this out. Hello friend, thank you so much, thinking of you, sympathy. So this is a great layout with this stamp set um, to use. So there's our first card. I see so many of you saying pretty and simple and thank you so much, I really appreciate that. Are we ready for our stepped up card? I've got two um, stepped up cards. So are we ready for the next one? I'm kind of excited. <clears throat> This is such a new process for me to do simple to stepped up and I had a lot of fun doing it and kind of thinking outside the box about how I could step up my cards. Now our next card also uses just stamps, ink, and paper. Um, but we're stepping it up a little bit so that we get a few layers going, all right? And I hope that I have all my layers cut, but if I don't, I'll cut some more. I'm gonna use a Sahara sand card base, and I can already see that I'm gonna need to cut a layer for the inside, no big deal. Um, let's do that right now, actually. Oops. I've got a scrap of basic white here, and I'm just going to cut this to five and a quarter by four, and we'll use this for our inside layer. Thank you, Cindy. That is so sweet of you. All right, we'll use this for the inside. And then um, I've got a couple other layers cut. Let me set this aside. Um, I've got a piece of the Peony Garden. I'm using this pretty petal pink design. Um, we also could use the gray. I don't know, do we wanna use the gray? The gray might be pretty to try out. Um, so this piece is one inch by five and a quarter, and then I've got a piece of basic white that's three inches by five and a quarter. Our Sahara Sand card base is five and a half by eight and a half. It's just a half a sheet of card stock folded in half. And then I've got a piece of mint macaron here, and I already forgot how big this piece is. So let me measure it quick. It's one and a quarter. Yep, one and a quarter by two and a quarter. Just cut as a rectangle. So the only, we have not needed any die cutting so far, die machine, just paper. So, hi Joanne, better late than never, I say, right? All right, let me set these aside. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna do our stamping again. I grab my flower. So we're really following the exact same thing we did with our last card. Only we're doing it on a smaller sheet of paper right now. From there. All right. Oops, what am I doing? I need this. We're gonna fill in with our leaves. So just filling in here, just doing the stamping that we all love. I'm gonna come down here and this looks good, I think. I don't need that extra one. Okay, now we're back to our watercolor splotch here. Okay, we're going to stamp off 
So stamp off. We're getting that lighter image of the petal pink here. There we go. And I'm going to step up our stamping just a little bit here by grabbing this bigger paint splotch. And I'm going to stamp a few of these bigger, these two bigger flowers in full strength with that paint splotch over the top. Oops, I'm getting off the screen a little bit. Sorry about that. All right, now we've got our mint macaron. I'm so, I'm really wondering how many of you are using this stamping off technique to change the tone of your ink. Do you use it a lot? Is it something you forget about? Sometimes some of these techniques, it's like, oh yeah, I forget about that. I look at a card someone made and I'm like, what color is that? How did you get that color? And I learned they stamped off a couple times to get the right tone. Um, and so I find that very interesting and that sometimes I forget that like myself. So, okay, so here we've got our piece, the lighter and we've added a little more texture. And you know what? We could do the same thing like we did on our last card, stamp a couple of these you know, full bore like that and bring in a variety of colors with only using these you know, two ink pads. Yeah, I see a lot of you do it a lot. Sometimes I forget about it. I'm just going to be honest because um, you can stamp off more than once and get some really pretty tones. Okay. Oh, let's stamp the inside while we have everything all inked. So this card is going to go like this. So let me get our, here we go, here we go, our black. And I'm going to come in from the side here. I see a lot of you stamp off a lot. I see some of my VIPs watching here too, and I just want to remind you that we only have a couple days left in our monthly challenge. So get those cards posted because I'm going to give away a free pack of DSP. And for those of you wondering how you can get in on that fun, you just have to place an order through my um, catalog and you get invited to my private VIP group. And I have lots of ideas for how we can inspire each other there. So don't forget. All right, so here's our inside. Just simple like we did with the front. Okay, let's do a little cleaning. Make sure I have this card base the right size, yeah. Sometimes I reach into my stash and I find a card base that looks like a card base and it's cut wrong, but this one was cut right. All right, I'm going to just adhere this to the inside. I'm using my stamp and seal, which I absolutely love. So many of you know that every time I use stamp and seal, I hear angels singing because it is so smooth and so wonderful to use. It's quiet, it's amazing. I love it. All right, so there's our inside. Isn't that pretty? Those colors are so gorgeous with the Sahara sand. Okay, now we're gonna start to put our card front together. Um, I think I had said that this is just stamps, ink, and paper, but I lied. Oops, we're gonna use a little ribbon on this card too. Okay, so I am taking my strip of the Peony Garden Designer Series paper and gluing that down. And then I'm going to glue this 
stamped layer right next to it, just like that. So it would help if I actually use my silicone mat so I don't get glue all over my desktop. I love this thing. I dug it out a few months back, and those of you who watch my lives lately will know that I use this silicone mat when I do my gluing because I got a new desktop, and I don't want to get it all gummy and full of glue. Okay, so here we have our card. And we're gonna dress this up a little bit with some twine. Now, I'm using the white twine from the um, Snail Mail Twine Combo Pack from the Spring Catalog. And I'm gonna kinda go along that crease where I glued the two cards together, or the two layers together. And I'm going to tie this in a bow at the top. So I wrapped it around twice, going to tie it in a bow. And when I'm using my twine, you know, I like to tie a knot first because I don't want John to have to come up here and give me the finger. <laughs> To hold down my bow is what I mean. I always say he loves me, but he's not that kind of husband that wants to hold my bows in place. So sometimes when I tie these, they get a little twisted. No big deal. Okay. And I'm just going to trim this off. I don't want it hanging on the whole card, there we go. Okay, so we got a little ribbon or twine tied around there, like so. And now we need our sentiment. So here we go again with our celebrating all the wonderful things about you. And I've remembered the square of uh, mint macaron. I am going to, what am I doing? I need my black. I'm going to stamp in my memento ink here. Make sure this is good and inked. And do my best to center it. Just like that. And we're going to add a little bit of dimension to our card by popping this up on dimensionals. So just going to do that here. And you really could put this anywhere, but I kind of like it here, tucked in the side. You decide where you like it. And there we have a stepped up card. So here's our simple, and here's our first stepped up card. What do we think? Are you loving it so far? I have one more stepped up. So are you ready to see my third card? Oh, we got more people popping on. Thanks for watching. Oh my gosh, so excited to have you all here tonight. Happy to be back from vacation. So we got stamps, ink, and paper, stamps, ink, and paper, and one ribbon embellishment. We've got the inside stamped. Totally, totally different look, but the same basic stamps. Love it. All right. So for our last card, we've also got Sahara Sam, but we're going to make a card that opens a little bit differently. We're going to make a tall card here. So this card is four and a quarter by 11 inches, and I've scored it. Whenever you have a card base that you make the tall way, you always want to score it. 
because the grain of the paper runs this way. So when you fold it this way, you're folding it with the grain, but when you fold it the tall way, you're going against the grain. And it can leave little ridges if you don't score that paper and break that grain. So always scoring your tall cards help to keep a nice crisp edge. And we're gonna do a tall card for this. Um, I need an inside layer, which I did not cut. So let's cut that really quick here. I'm just grabbing a piece from my, well, this might work. Hey, it's already cut. Love it. All right. Okay, so before I clean these off, I am going to stamp. And got some ink on my silicone mat that I don't want to transfer over, so I'm just gonna wipe that off. Hi, Kathy. Welcome. Thanks for watching. All right. And we're stamping our inside first. Now this time on our Avid or really stepped up card, super stepped up, I'm going to call it. I'm going to stamp the inside just a little bit different than the last one. So I'm going to stamp off on that watercolor wash like so, and I'm going to bring in these paint splatters. And I don't remember if I did that on the last inside. I think I did, though. So. Did I do that? Oh, yeah, I totally did. <laughs> How quickly I forget. All right, this is going to go on the inside. I'm going to set this aside for now. Okay, and I've got... <clears throat> Our layer, this time this layer is three and a quarter inches wide. This is still one inch, but this is three and a quarter. So I'm going to do my stamping on this. I almost put my black flower in my petal pink ink pad. So I averted that crisis. So what do you guys think of this simple to stepped up? Are you seeing how easy it can be to take um, a, a basic layout and just adjust a few things and get totally different look? Sometimes it's just easier. Um, to do like a simple to stepped up because it doesn't take as much creative brain power. You really are just taking the same card and adding a few elements to it. And I hear a lot of people tell me, oh my gosh, I got all my stamping stuff and I don't know what to do with it. Like it's home and you know, when I was going to club with you and, you know, we were making cards together, I knew what to do with my supplies because you designed the cards for me. And it's hard for me to think on my own, you know, what to make. And that is so common. I hear that so much. And I wanted to show you this technique tonight to show you that you can use the same layout and not have to stretch your brain thinking about a new layout or a new way to do something. And you could absolutely make a card with what you have on hand without even swapping out your supplies for the most part. I hope all of you will give this a try maybe to get through a little creative block if you need to, maybe just for fun. Now for each of these, 
I am stamping off. And then I'm going to come back like I have before at full bore with a couple of them. On the flowers, I came back at full bore on all of them to get a little splash. So here's what we have here. Hi, Carol from Connecticut. How exciting. I bet you have beautiful autumn colors there in Connecticut. I'm going to clean these off because I'm getting nervous that I'm going to drop my layers here. And we don't want that to happen. Okay, so now we need to do a little die cutting because this is our super stepped up card. All right, I've got a scrap of Knit macaron here, and I'm going to use my baby boss. I have an extra baby boss, and I was thinking it might be fun to do a giveaway on my page if we hit a certain number of followers on my page. Would you guys be game for that? For sharing my page with your friends so that we could do a fun giveaway of a Stampin' Up! mini stamp and cut and emboss machine let me know if you'd be open to that <clears throat> okay so i have my painted labels dies here and i'm going to use this label here with our mint macaron piece oops Okay, we're gonna run that through. Oh, I see a couple people think that would be super fun. I've been thinking about doing something like that and I think that would be awesome. Like if we reach a certain number of followers on my page, I would do a big prize drawing giveaway of a little baby boss. I thought that would be fun. Um, okay, let me think about what I was doing here. I get distracted really easily. Um, next, I want to, I wonder if this is going to fit on my baby boss. Oh my gosh, it totally is. So, let's do this. I'm going to see how big I can cut this. So let me try three and a quarter. I gotta cut my, um, I'm cutting my champagne foil down to a size that will fit in my baby boss here. Hi, Noelle, welcome. You know I love that name because it's my niece's middle name. I got to see my niece. When we got back from Florida, I brought her a little souvenir. Oops, darn ladybug. He wants to be the star of the show. Okay. All right, so I've got this fun little whimsical circle. I'm gonna cut that out of my champagne foil paper and I've got this fun little edge die. And I'm going to cut that out too. Okay. Oops. Okay, so here is, I'm going to give you guys, here's what some people are talking about with the baby boss. They're having a hard time getting it to run through the machine. Well, I was just doing that. It felt like my sandwich was too big. So what I like to do is offset my top plate from my bottom plate and get it started. And then once I do that, it will, I have this too close to the edge. Should go through just fine. Let's hope I'm right. 
Oh, maybe I do. These are old dice, so maybe it's not going to work. Sometimes I think I'm rolling it the wrong way. I don't know why this isn't working. So weird. Okay, so forget this. I think the sandwich could be too thick. Because this paper is thicker. So give me a minute here. I don't want to make you guys wait around for me. We'll just get out our big boss. Oh, my niece, she is four. And her name is Clara. And for her souvenir down in Florida, um, I got her a, a friendship bracelet with her name on that matches mine. So my bracelet says Rose, and it says Rose B, because I have a little inside joke with my sister. We call each other B, and when my niece was like, I don't know, one of the times that my sister and I were video chatting, we said goodbye, and we always say, okay, bye, B, and Clara out of the blue goes, bye, B. So she was picking up that we call each other B, and we thought it was like, the funniest thing. So she was excited that she got a bracelet to match mine and to match her mom's, my sister's. And we just had so, so much fun um, giving her her souvenir. Oh, I love this circle too. And it looks like the inside is going to pop right out. And it doesn't. It's stitched. So super cool. Love that. And I just need to, I ran this through twice because I, with this thicker paper, I really wanted to make sure that it would pop out easy. Yeah, sometimes those sandwiches, especially when you're using a thick paper, I see Robin saying that sometimes she struggles with the 3D embossing folder. They're just too thick and you need time to just figure out you know, what you need to do. And I didn't want to make you all wait. Um, well, I tried to figure it out. So I thought I'll just go the easy route. Um, i just pop it out in my big boss. All right. I'm just getting these little pieces flopped out of here. That's the one thing I absolutely love about our foil paper. When you're doing really intricate dye pieces, they pop out so nice. Oh my gosh, so nice. Because that paper is kind of firm, so it's really nice. Okay, get my mess out of the way. Okay, have a nap in your ear off. Here we go. We've got two die cut pieces now, that fun whimsical stitch circle, and then this um, champagne foil, little, I don't know, what is this thing? A little border thing. Hi, Robin. Welcome. Glad you could watch tonight. Okay. We're going to do a little gluing. So I'm going to grab my layer and just put a little strip right to the very outside edge. And this little piece that we cut out, I'm going to line that up so that I'm gluing this thicker part to my card stamped layer, just like this. So what we are left with, I did it to the wrong side. This hasn't dried yet, so that's good. I actually need to do it on this side. <laughs> Funny. All right, so let's try this again. And now I didn't get my glue close enough to the edge. That's where the silicone mat really comes in handy, especially if you're gluing like 
close to the edge of something. And it's okay if it's a little sticky on the back, like no one's touching the back of this layer, so it's no big deal. But what I have here now is this little layer, kind of uh, this little border peeking out behind, all right? So there we have that. And let's glue this on the inside right away before I forget. I'm gonna glue our inside layer on. Okay, so we've got our inside done. Now we're gonna start putting our outside together. So I've got my strip of designer series paper. And I'm gonna glue this to the outside edge here, just like so. And I'll look at my bottom. All right. And next, I'm gonna pop this up on dimensionals. So that's why I said it's not a big deal if it's sticky because it's getting popped up anyway. So we're good there. I want this to be firm, so I'm taking the edge of my dimensionals. Can you believe it? I'm using the edge of my dimensionals willingly. I get a nice big chunk right in the middle there so it stays solid all the way through. But I gotta pull the backing off of it. Okay, and what I'm gonna do now is line this up over the top of this layer. And hopefully my head is not in here too much. Okay, just like so. Okay, so now we've got a couple layers here. Here's what we have so far. We're not done yet. Uh, we're going to glue this down to our card front. Here. And I think I'm going to go, yeah, like this. Okay, so now we've got another layer of dies here. And remember this piece of mint macaron, whoops, I ripped it, that we cut out. Let's do our stamping on there. We'll get our sentiment. Oh, thank you, Joanne. She says beautiful detail. I find that these stepped up cards really are all about those extra little details. You know, we have a lot of fun with it. All right, I'm going to take this big paint splotch and just right across here, I should have stamped off. I'm going to stamp off for the next one. Just like that. So we've got a little stamping on our label. It got a little darker than I had hoped, but we can still see our sentiment. No big deal. And we need some ribbon, but I'm going to change it up here. I'm going to grab my white crinkled seam binding. And what's cool about this ribbon, I'm just going to get a piece of it here, is we can tailor this to match the colors of our card by using our stamp and blends. So I'm going to, this is too long. 
I'm only going to color this ribbon using the wide tip mar marker of my uh, dark mint macaron stamp and blend. So I'm gonna take this ribbon from white to mint macaron just by coloring it. And again, none, none of this is complicated techniques, just little extra details that you can do. Now, what I love about coloring this crinkled seam binding with our alcohol marker is it makes the ribbon a bit more stiff. And I actually really, really like that for tying a bow. So I'm just going to tie a bow here in my ribbon. There we go. And then just like any other ribbon, you can tug on the edges to make it the size you want it. And you can tighten it and do all sorts of fun things. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tuck this bow. Definitely need this quite a bit shorter. We're gonna tuck this bow behind our die cut mint macaron piece. I'm arranging my tails of the bow. And I want to place it first. Yeah, so I'm going to want it like, like that. So let me grab my mini glue dot. See, we are layers upon layers upon layers here of just small details to step up our card. and really give it that wow factor. Okay, I'm gonna use some edges. Of this. Grab this. I think I want one in the middle. There we go. What do you think of all these details, right? It's not hard, just some fun to try out with your products. Okay, and I'm gonna adhere that. I'm gonna snip that end, snip that end. And we need some bling. So I was thinking we've got some black in here or we've got some champagne. I feel like the champagne would look really nice. So I'm gonna use these champagne rhinestones and I'll put a big one here to add some bling. And then maybe a smaller one kind of tucked in by those leaves. I know, Jody. edges twice in one video. Can't believe it. So there we have our blingy card. And we have got, let me do a little cleaning up here so I can show you guys our simple to stepped up projects tonight. <clears throat> All right, we've got our first very simple card, a really pretty, soft, simple card. 
And we've got a little more stepped up. Stamp sync paper and ribbon, all you need for that one. And then we've got some of these details with some die cutting and some extra layers and some bling and some fancy cutting of your ribbon, right? Like this is the same layout, but we use a bunch of different um, details. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in here for you so you can see that. Awesome, right? Absolutely love it. So there's our simple to stepped up. Thank you so much for watching me tonight. I had a blast doing this. This was my first time showcasing some simple to stepped up cards. And I really had a lot of fun doing it. Um, if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would absolutely be so thrilled to earn your business. You can find my online store here at www.rosegrunewald.com plus all sorts of inspiration. This is my blog, so there's all sorts of inspiration there. My host code for the month of March is ADVD3TYA. And I want you, when you're here, you can subscribe to my blog. And listen, I want you to be paying attention because I am about to roll out a new class using the art gallery bundle. And how would you like a sneak peek of one of the cards that you're gonna to get to make in that class? Super excited about this. This is coming soon. It's going live April 1st. Isn't that adorable? Super pretty. That's one of the cards you get to make in my uh, class to go. So if you love classes to go, I have a link for that right here too at www.rosegrunwell.com. And that class will be going live April 1st. So keep an eye out for your email and such for that. All right, I am wrapping up. I hope that you all had a wonderful time and were inspired by my painted poppies, simple to step up cards. Um, I'll be giving these away as my prizes next week for commenting. Thank you so much for sharing and supporting my small business. I will see you next week, same place, same time, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time right here on my Country Cards by Rose Facebook page where you can catch me live and join in the fun yourself. I will see you then. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye.